Mind your language. Mind your language, yeah. Linguistic relativity. That's what we're going to be talking about today. And it's all relative to how you use language and what you do with your mouth. Well, that sounds a bit... <laughs> <laughs> no, not what you do with your mouth. What comes out of your mouth. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I thought, what, what are we going to be talking about today? <laughs> well, anyway... Please do join us. And if you enjoy listening to the English Sisters and this podcast, please share it with your family and friends and follow and begin. Begin, not begin. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Violetta has one word. Well, because it's all about language today, isn't it? It is all about language, yes. So so begin is the the beginning of all. So welcome to Get Real Real with with the English English Sisters. Sisters. Hello, everyone. Hi. Yeah. um, It's it's uh, it's (laughs) my words have gone. (laughs) (laughs) Your words have gone because you're looking at me with my glasses on, and normally we don't have our glasses on when we when we record, do we? No, it's not because of that, isn't it? It's because it's mind your language. I'm thinking, what language am I going to use? Inspired yeah, well, to... yeah, it's it's interesting though. I mean, this we've always be, we've always been aware of this <laughs> as bilinguals. We've always mm-hmm. kind of intuitively realised that we have all the words when in one language one word is missing. For example, in English, we can either pick up on the Italian version or the Spanish version. <laughs> what are you laughing at? It's so true. No, it's true. It's true. It's true. And that like uh, amplifies. Oh, just the Spanish, the Italian as well. The Italian as well a lot Italian. now because living in Italy for so many years now. Yes, the Italian has become. We're fluent in that. So, yeah, definitely. But still, some words just, just come out in Spanish. Like the other day I was asking, you know, my, my child. Well, my child. <laughs> He's 25 now, but anyway, he's still my child, yeah. I said, can you pass me the pepinos? I suppose you would probably say your son. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, my son, (laughs) there you go. My son, I mean, every time I think of the word son, it's just sun for me. Well, sunshine. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful though, but it affects me, you know, sun, ah. You know, I think. Well, that's oh. a nice way to think. Yeah, about I always sun. think of son. Yeah, as Sunshine, the son. But you don't call him son. You call him child. I know. I will, we should call him more son, really, <laughs> because it's very enlightening. I mean, I have two sons. Yeah, so. and also I think that's a, well, it's a good thing that you've just said because when you call someone your child, you 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 think of them as them kids. As children, yeah, more. yeah. You, yeah. You're more likely to. In your mind, mind, yeah, to to think of them still as children, and yes, of course, they're children, we know they're but, not. I mean, children. they're not little. Yeah, no. So when you say my son, it puts and... them into category of adults, doesn't it? Absolutely, yeah, you're right. So yeah, they, yeah, that's yeah. already catching on on the language, isn't it? It is catching on the language. You're so right. Yeah. Well, anyway, I asked my son for, to pass me the pepino, which pepino is cucumber. But that that comes back from my childhood because mum would always call them pepinos because mum was Spanish. Exactly. So I just pick up on the words I find, you know, that are and easier to use. Yeah, obviously the ones that are easier because being bilingual or the ones that yeah you're, you're more familiar with, maybe. Yeah, maybe yeah, but it, it's very very interesting. What is this linguistic relativity relativity that you were talking about earlier well the linguistic relativity states that the way that people think of the world is influenced directly by the language that the people use to talk about it the people (laughs) i mean it's we (laughs) Uh, or more radically people could only perceive aspects of the world for which their language has words (laughs) so it sounds really complicated but if you Basically, if you have never seen, it's like the chicken thing. You've never seen a chicken. A chicken can practically walk right in front of you. And if you don't have words for, you don't believe it. Don't you remember there was a study done? Yes, but I can't really believe that if you have no words for something, that means you can't see that something. Do you think the mind may not delete it? Because there is no word for it. Well, maybe if you live in that country and you've never seen a chicken and there's no chickens <laughs> around. and uh, I mean, because uh, if we, 
I don't know. Because a chicken is still an animal, so I think the brain is clever enough to, to say, categorize okay, it. it's not a turkey. I don't know no. what it is, but it looks a bit like a turkey, so it's, therefore it's an animal. Yeah, it, it's a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> but if, yeah, it's a bird, perhaps, of some yeah, sort, a walking you bird. You would think it's some kind of, oh, what's that creature? You would yeah. think it was a creature, but I think you would probably still see it. It's like the way that people think, a lot of people, when they think of chickens, they think they've got four legs. You know, that's that's one of those mysteries, isn't it? But I wouldn't. I wouldn't but chickens know. I have two know. legs. Well, they're birds. Birds yeah. have two legs. Yeah. But like a lot of, you know, people, if, if they are asked to draw, draw a chicken, they'll think... It's a bit like of, us, and we've got two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is not turning out to be a very scientific... <laughs> well, it never is with the English system. No, it isn't, no. It's... um. It's a bit of fun, really. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, so it look language. There is no doubt we do have to mind the words we use and the mind the mind the words that we think about as well that we verbalize out to ourselves as well. I think the words that you use, I take a deep sigh because it's a very serious topic, really. <laughs> because the words that yes. you use affect your reality without you realizing it yeah it's kind of very and potent they can cause you so much anxiety and so much stress without you being aware of it so once you do become aware of it it's like uh, it's like uh, this it's magical because you suddenly realize oh my gosh i'm keeping myself entrapped in this almost like a language prison prison of the of the words Absolutely, that you're using yeah. the, the 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 phrases that you're using every day that keep you stuck or the opposite they can liberate they you can and empower you. you and make you feel wonderful and free and amazing so it really is um so a practical example like of that what would it be like track, yeah wouldn't it? What would a practical example be? Well, a practical example, for instance, if you're always saying to yourself that you can't do things, for instance. All right, I yeah, can't yeah. do that. I'm useless at that. I'm rubbish at this. I'm, no, it's not in my, you know, I've never been good at that stuff. Or no, I'm not capable of that. Yeah, that's so true. That's a very practical example, yeah. yeah. And of the you, limits you're you, putting you're, on. You're putting, yeah, so one of the examples could be you could be limiting yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So instead of, instead of saying, oh, I'm rubbish at that, I'm no good at that, what about if you say to yourself, mm, I've never tried that before, I wonder what it would be like. Yeah, or I tried try that. that once in 1984 and I was not very good, good at, at it. it but I, I, wonder I, I was now. rubbish at it, but maybe now, hey, I've changed. Yeah, I may be good at it now, yeah. you know, I, well, allowing... I want to try with someone else. I want to have a new experience of that same thing with a... A more empowering experience. Exactly, yeah. So true. That's very, very true, yeah. Or it's like if you're maybe not feeling well or you've been diagnosed with something and you keep on repeating to yourself, oh, I'm, I'm not well, I'm not yeah. well, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick, I have this, and, and you, you, you keep on repeating that to yourself. You know, that's not, it's not really helpful to yourself, is it? Because then it becomes your reality. You 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 can actually, you know, become you sicker and sicker. Worse. You can feel worse, that's for sure. Because it will affect the way you feel. Or as if you say, well, I've been diagnosed with this and I'm, I'm going to cope with it in the best way I can and I'm going to obviously follow the hospital appointments, etc. But in the meantime, I can also feel great. You know, yeah. and, and if you can, and what, or, or I'm doing the best that I can, but I'm going to enjoy myself in the meantime, you know, and, and make it, the most of my life. It doesn't it? Yes. Instead of thinking I am, you know. Labeling yourself. Lab I am a sick person. I am a sick person. I yeah, I have person. this, I have this, and thus this, whatever it is whatever illness it is can become like you it almost becomes part of your identity and um whereas well, i was just thinking now that you yeah. said that i was just thinking like in the in um what's well back a few years where or in some cultures where they where when you were a widow you would say i am a widow yes and that's it <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you still say that nowadays. I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're so happy with yourself. And I am a widow. I mean, oh, gosh. No, touch yeah. wood. Touch wood. I am a widow, but you, they would, or I, uh, if you've lost your parents, I am an orphan. And, uh, and some people lose their parents when they're like, in the well into their 50s and 60s and they say I am an orphan it's going to make you feel a lot worse than if you say my parents have passed on and I am who I am and I'm and you don't call yourself an orphan once you start calling yourself an orphan I mean we've all seen yeah it's it's in our culture to feel sorry for orphans to feel that they haven't and, got and it, it auto you know you auto you auto commiserate yourself yeah. yeah you start having this enormous self-pity for yourself which I mean it's okay to feel miserable for a couple of days or weeks or whatever you know the oh, grieving yes, yes. or yeah the illness accepting the illness blah blah we all know you know that's a necessary very necessary for you we're not saying do not do that but then in the meantime it's just this this you know labeling yourself whatever it is I am a pensioner oh my goodness what does that mean you're a pensioner you're old uh, you know I mean for a lot this is a stereotype generalization isn't it yeah you know of what a classic pensioner old you've got to do crosswords <laughs> Uh, go, I don't know, go to the park and, <laughs> but no, you could be much more. You could be, you know, you could, you be, could be a pensioner. Functioning. You could be receiving a pension, but it doesn't mean you are a pensioner. Anything that comes after the I, I am, dot, 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 whatever comes after that is, it's tricky because it, do, it can become part of your identity. And thus I am a civil engineer I am all of this a as doctor. well yes well doctors are particular because they, they their, their job sort of like lasts forever doesn't it yeah. almost and they're always on call aren't they yeah but they have to uh, declare themselves to be doctors like well, in an emergency we all have to declare ourselves whatever we are no we don't well, uh, well no, doctors are always it's a bit like well if you're flying and you say yeah. is there a doctor on board yeah, you're, you're obliged, you're to, obliged. Declare, to declare that you're a doctor you're well, not allowed to just keep quiet no, no you're not no 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 I I, uh, I mean it's like being um, I don't know why I'm funny it's so funny I suppose yeah. it's because they're, they're these it's like, if like a flight attendant once you were a flight attendant since I used to be a flight if there is somebody that they do say is there a flight attendant on board you are supposed to say yes, because in case of an emergency, you can assist and help because you have the training. So, I mean, let alone a doctor, mm. a doctor, uh, obviously, yes, you, you're legally I, What I'm concerned that. with is that these labels that like the language gives you and yes. also your studies, obviously, and things that you do, but they, they condition you from the minute you accept them they condition you into they keep you where they are well yeah, and, i mean it's a bit like that show actually that's come to mind now maybe that's why i was thinking about it as well there's a new show now i think it's on apple tv mm. about it's called some machine i can't remember what it is now because mm. i mean i was just watching it and th this machine prints out these cards right if you know what it is which you right. obviously you just yeah <laughs> give us a shout out in the is it like a in the comment thing i yeah. think it must be and it mm. prints out these kinds he says your your life's purpose or your life's you are you are a, like a, um, a preacher or a priest or a doctor oh my goodness. or a liar uh, oh my god yeah it, it prints Creepy. out these cards so yeah. the people in the in the town that get these cards it like really starts conditioning them you are a queen you are a teacher one of them the actual right. main yeah. character he just gets teacher which is what he's already doing doing so that's okay well he's very he's very uh, unnerved by this he doesn't want it <laughs> <laughs> no wonder well, he's unnerved well, everyone I mean... else is getting these amazing things you're a queen you're a oh, you're, a, right. you're a magician oh and he he gets... he gets you're a teacher and he finds it boring perhaps well we don't know what happens that sounds interesting yes i like it's those quite, kind of magical things it's a kind of mental thing like a, yeah. like a mind show a show about the mind and how how these things do condition you and they they affect you well obviously i mean this is obviously it's some sci-fi thing but yes in real life this is very much i mean it's just 
it affects you tremendously just from the moment you get up mm. you start saying to yourself this is going to be a bad day oh god I hate it today today I've got this this and this and then there you go these it somehow it seems that you you kind of start things start happening to you you can't find the shoe or I don't know <laughs> you can't find the blouse you wanted to wear and yeah, yeah. so like when you say this come is a on. bad hair day and then it does become a bad hair yeah, day. Yeah, it suddenly starts or raining. Or I've got out of the wrong side of the bed. Yeah. Then everything, you, then your brain looks for everything to qualify that. Yes. So all the nice things that happen in between you ignore. And you ignore. Other, other, it's a bit like ignoring that chicken. You, it just, you don't do it on purpose. It just them. becomes deleted because you might say this is a rotten day and then go downstairs and have a lovely coffee or a beverage with somebody that you love or you might be just have a moment of quiet time and look outside and see something really lovely at your pet something so there's all these lovely little bits in between that you will delete and your mind will say okay you have told me it's a horrible day let's make that become your reality for today so it's a bit like the card that's printed but it's kind of like printed in your mind and it's a dangerous game to play mm. once you become aware of it because you could be doing this on repetition you could be doing this for years every time you get up I hate my job I hate this oh no oh god no and you once you catch yourself doing this you think you know what, what should I say instead what can I write on that card? What can I write in yeah, print in my mind? Yeah, you could be saying, oh, this miserable, uh, the, you know, the climate's crisis. It's raining It's raining, today. someone Yuck. got shot, oh, no. It's, it could just be There's a There's so a many tragedies spiral. that happen there, there. every day, every minute, every second in this world. And yet, somehow, we... we we're resilient. We're resilient, humans. yeah, and we have to... We have to gain more resilience in order to be able to shine the light on, or, you know, with other people and share that. You know, you have to, like, it's important not... To light up the world. Yes, it's important to light up the world. <laughs> yeah, with your while presence. You, with your own you light as that, well. If you bring that purpose into your day, I'm going to light up the world with my presence you're going to I mean, be... That's, that's a big job, but... My world. Yes. Your personal world. Yes. What difference could you make if you if you get up with that with that kind of job in your mind? I know. It's going to make you feel so much better. Better, so much better, yeah. Lovely smile, share yeah. it. The way you just go about, just the way you go about your day, the way you, you go about looking at yourself as well, your, you know, you... You know, you're your kind own to kindness. Yourself. You're your kind to yourself. Kindness. Your inner kindness, yeah. It changes everything. It really is like that. That TV program mm. you're watching. I'm still trying to remember what it's called. I it's probably believe... called Mind Games or no, something. No, it's not. It's not called. <laughs> <laughs> Just given it some kind of machine thing. Well, anyway, it is very true. It's very, very true. <laughs> I mean, if you had, I wonder what would happen it if just we had said, like someone recording our thoughts all day, and gosh, then at the end of it, at the end of the day, you have got statement. the printed summary. You know, like on football games, you get the, oh my you gosh. get the summary of how how much possession, the and you team get it on had, your phone and you read it, and how it. much this, that, so and so, how many chances they had. Imagine if in life you had that going through your mind, and it would just print it out at the end of the day, and you get like, <laughs> like or how you know, then you they say how much screen time have you yeah had yeah how many th how so many how many good thoughts have you had today how many inspiring thoughts have you had today how many smiles inside have you had today Gosh. how many things and then the opposite how many horrible thoughts how many downward spiral thoughts how many limiting thoughts if you, if you and then that, and then what, what and then you had and then it would you had your little vote at the end of the day gosh not only your vote, but what these thoughts, how did they impact. affect your your heart? We probably should create an app for that. We That's should. A nice idea. Yeah, how they affect how you're breathing, your heart rate, your blood pressure, yeah. um, your whole body, your, your, your body and your mind, because these thoughts will affect yeah. you on a physical level. They will cause sickness, disease, illness, anxiety. 
Or they could so, do the opposite. So, for instance, if you're not driving right now right. and you're in a safe place, you can. If you're if you are driving and you're not in a safe place, please pause this podcast until you are, because we're gonna just do a little hypnosis trance for you, for good thoughts and for good, good thoughts, yeah, to come your way. So just it's just gonna be a short thing, like two minutes or three minutes. So. If you want to fast forward it three minutes, mind you, we'll probably end the podcast, I think, won't we, after this? Yeah, probably, yeah. So just <clears throat> listen at home when you're in a safe place. So if you're not driving and you're in a safe place, just close your eyes and go inside. And you can take a lovely deep breath now. And as you begin to focus on how your body's feeling against the surface that you're resting on, you can begin to relax each muscle. And you can notice how the muscles on your face can slightly soften and relax. And how your mind can wander to a wonderful place of calm. And how in the next few days and the upcoming week, You'll begin to notice that the language you use every day inspires you in creative ways. And the more creative you become, the more serene your mind becomes. And the happier thoughts flow through each and every cell of your body, lighting up your inner world. Just like the sun lighting up each and every dark corner of your mind is filled with light. And the words that you choose to verbalise are beautiful, inspiring, lovely, kind, soothing, calming words. Calming words. Like a river flowing gently that provide you with all the nourishment your mind needs right now. Or a morning sunrise that lights up every cell in your body. A soothing balm. Healing your mind and your inner thoughts. Healing and sealing every part of your body that needs it right now. Making you feel ever so comfortable. Ever so calm, remembering the words you use will affect how you feel in the days and weeks to come. Noticing every word that comes out of your mouth. It will be almost magical experience for you. Almost as if it was in slow motion. Automatically the best words for you. So inspiring, creative, beautiful, wonderful words, kind words, nourishing words, flowing through, deeply you rooted inside healthier, your mind now, stronger words and more empowered than ever before. Make you giving you that kind of charm resilient that comes from within comfortable knowing what calm, you know now you'll be set more free more from words as that the days and weeks and you go ahead in time making you you feel will know more the best words to choose your notice. Wonderful words popping up empowered in your mind and make you smile. Inside and out. Inside sharing and out your light with the world. Take a deep breath and two, three, one. Open your Feeling eyes. refreshed and, and ready, ready to go. To go and mind the words you use. Minding <laughs> your words day by day. Thank you for listening. Please 
do come and say hello on Instagram. Do come and say hello. LinkedIn. Yes. Join our LinkedIn newsletter where we have we publish the podcast every week. And please do come and say hello on Twitter. And please, please, please leave a review. Yes. Because it makes such a difference. Such a on difference. On Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. I see they have a section now where you can leave your thoughts on each episode. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. So leave your thoughts and we'll, we'll get back to you on there. We will, definitely. Thank you and see you soon. We'll see be minding soon. our words. Minding our words. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, lots of Bye-bye. love and smiles from the English, English sisters. sisters. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.